Hello and welcome to the premiere of My Shot. Thank you all for coming. I'm Nancy Gold, the director, and I couldn't be happier to be here sharing with you our tribute to the women and girls around the globe who have taken their shot to change the world. In 2020, our world changed. Plays, live theater were put on hold. But true to Burke's mission of educating, encouraging, and empowering girls, this grade four didn't skip a beat. They said yes and and went right into making a film, all on Zoom. Green screens were handed out and 44 production studios were created. All parts of this film were created virtually. Even though I wrote the script, please note that it is filled with original poetry, paintings, graphics, song choices, lyrics, aerial routine, ballet dance, costumes, and characters which all come from the 44 members of the cast. Oh, and be sure to watch all the credits to the very end for our heartfelt thank you to all of you who helped make this virtual endeavor a reality. Without further ado, grab your popcorn, beverage, and get comfy in your favorite seat. It's time to see my shot. Roll tape! She's just a girl and she's on fire. I'm in a fantasy, running like a highway. She's the middle one and it's on fire. Been a catastrophe, but you know it's gonna fly away. Whoa! She's got both feet on the ground and she's burning it down. Whoa, she's got a head in the clouds and she's not backing down. This girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. Welcome everybody to My Shot, the show that aims to bring to you the latest and greatest stories about women from all over the globe who are changing the world one shot at a time. I am Katie B, the first of many field reporters coming to you from my shelter in place field, my backyard. Stop it, stop it. Yes, that's right folks. Nothing will keep me from taking my shot and sharing with you the full history Scratch that. Her stories filled with the action hero, her, heroes, sheroes of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. She had dreams and set goals. She worked hard and overcame obstacles. She was confident and believed in herself. She was strong and didn't let people stop her. And most importantly, she changed the world. Bye. I couldn't have said that better myself. You know, sometimes it takes a long time and many shows to make a shot successful. That's called a long shot. Our show today is dedicated to all the shiros whose shoulders we stand on because they each took a shot that led to another shot which eventually led to change. Let's get started. Field reporter Bert Spurge is going to share what was expected of women 100 years ago. Take it away. Bert Spurky, here's the newly discovered footage of Miss Manor School for Young Ladies. A dance performance is in progress celebrating the virtues of femininity. Let's watch!
Wasn't that lovely? The essence of feminine virtues, elegant, refined, delicate, and dainty. It is almost time for tea. Look, here comes Miss Manners for today's lesson. Young ladies, your attention please. Today we will be discussing the do's and the don'ts of a modern woman in society today. 1848. You must remember, the woman's place is in the home. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And a woman is to be seen, not heard. Absolutely. Absolutely. What would he possibly have to say? I won, I won. Father knows best. Yes. Oh, yes yes, 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 yes. Very good. Now, if a woman is not married, then she is an old maid. Girl, oh, what? what? Yes. yes. Really? When you own nothing, all your money belongs to your husbands, brothers, and sons. My brother? Now, wait a minute. And as a girl, you do not play sports. It's unladylike. No soccer! This is going way too far! Going to school is for boys. After all, he is the breadwinner. You must support your brother in his educational needs. No, no, no. That, that is just not, not right. right! And above all, voting is a man's job, period. We'll, we'll see, see about, about that. that. <laughs> Where are they all going? Over here, vote for women. Oh, hello, I'm Susan B. Anthony. You see, this time has come to make a change. We want equal rights for women. Go to the convention in Seneca Falls, New York. It's 1848. It's time women become equal members of society. It's time women get the right to vote. Did you know that the native woman of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, that is the Iroquois, Mohawk, Onondaga, Cayula, and Seneca's tribes have had a vote in tribal discussions for 1,000 years? Really? That's inspiring. You're a big step ahead of us. It's time we catch up. Uh, and as I was saying, will we be known as the suffragettes? Vote for women! Vote for women! It is going to take 70 years in the blood, sweat, and tears of many, many women to accomplish this shot. Roll take. So remember, man, if you come to work tomorrow and your secretary refuses to do the filing and then go home and find that your wife has refused to do the cooking, don't blame them. Remember, you gave them the vote 50 years ago. It had been the opening act in what proved to be an epic struggle for equality. A crusade carried out by millions of women over the better part of a century to secure for themselves the right to vote and thereby participate in America's democracy. This struggle is going on at the same time that the nation is resolving the Civil War. So to introduce women is to disrupt a political culture that is built on exclusion, that is built on the notion that politics is a white man's business. It's a civil rights battle. We don't think of it like that, but it truly is a great civil rights battle. Suffragists have to change the idea of what women's role in society will be. What is her claim on citizenship? The textbooks when I went to school said women were given the vote. We weren't given anything. We took it. Thank you, Burke Sperky, Catherine Dell of My Shot. I'll continue the coverage here in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Tennessee Legislature. This is where the final vote to ratify the 19th Amendment took place 100 years ago, on August 18th, 1920. We are excited to share this newly discovered footage from the day of ratification. Extra, extra, read all about it. Nation shot, suffragettes in prison, suffragettes beaten. Women won't back down for the right to vote. When the final vote was taken, the representatives who were voting nay wore red roses, and the representatives who were voting I wore yellow roses. As a leader of the suffragettes, I, Carrie Chapman Cat, want to remind you that we are so close. We need 36 states to ratify the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. 
we win here, then we'll finally have the right to vote. It has been a tie so far. The final vote is happening right now. We must get to the chambers. The voting was going smoothly until... Have you seen Representative Harry Byrne? I have an important letter for him from, uh, Phoebe Byrne. Oh, I believe it's his mother. Representative Harry Byrne, an urgent letter for you from your mother. Thank you. Seven pages, Mom. Dear Harry, hurrah and vote for the suffrage. Don't keep them in doubt. I've been watching to see how you stood, but I haven't noticed anything yet. Be a good boy and help Mrs. Cat win ratification. Representative Byrne from Eastern Tennessee, how do you vote? I. With that, I vote from Representative Byrne. Tennessee votes for the 19th Amendment. It is ratified. Representative Byrne, future generations want to know why did you change your vote? I know that a mother's advice is always safest for her boy to follow, and my mother wanted me to vote for ratification. Well, I guess we can now say, Mother knows best. We won! We won! We won! Well, actually, that's not totally correct. White woman got the vote. Well, Asian women had to wait until 1943 when the Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed. An African-American woman had to wait until the Landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965. Now it's 2021. Over 100 years since women have gotten the vote. Let's see how things have changed. Here's our newest segment, Fashion Forward. <laughs> Fashion Ford, and I'm Frida Fashion. And I'm Stella Styles. And today we're going to break it down into what was in then and what's in now. And a boy, or should I say girl, does a hundred years make a difference? Let's look at the flip suck of fashion. The silhouette has always driven the latest looks and styles. Back in the 1800s, it looked like this. Corsets, bustles, and petticoats, and 25 pounds of fabric. Moving around was not meant to be easy. Those corsets were so tight that women had strategically placed sofas called fainting couches where they could rest up if they got dry of breath. In Seneca Falls Convention, Elizabeth Smith Miller, a cousin of the famous suffragette Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, had the confidence to break the rules. She, Stanton, and her neighbor Amelia Bloomer wore a new costume. She wore Turkish trousers to the ankle reach, with a skirt reaching four inches below the knee. The Bloomer was born. Along with the idea of women were trying to wear the pants in the family. And skipping ahead to today, we're going to have a silhouette in women's fashion in 2021. And gone with the courses, butts, and petticoats. What's in freedom of movement? Today's runway show theme is dedicated to the woman of 2020 going to vote. See you at the game. See you in the boardroom. See you at the rally. Thanks for joining us today. Yes, thanks. We cannot wait to see what women's fashion going forward will be in the years to come. Bye. Thanks, Fashion Forward. It's so nice to be all dressed up. Great to know where we've come from. Uh, here's one for you. Where are we going now? All right, everyone, please put your cell phones away. We are about to begin our seminar, Women's Studies. Here's your espresso shot, Miss Modern. Thanks, dear. Let's begin. We are going to go over the, the role of women today in 2020. Let's raise a glass of freedom. Well, in this case, a cup of coffee. To the 100-year anniversary of the 19th Amendment. 
women have the right to vote. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 How yeah. are women faring economically now? A woman's money belongs to her and no one else. Yes, and now we can open bank accounts, credit cards, and own a business and property in our own name without a male's written permission. Remember, this only happened in the last 50 years. What? what? Really? really? Only in the last 50 years? 50 years? Marriage is a woman's choice. Yeah. yeah! I know you all have been enjoying this one. Women and girls play all sports with full competition and power. No way you're not equal, bye! Excuse me, Miss Modern, Chris McKendry here. First woman television sports news anchor. She's a sports news anchor. This is Kendry. So glad you made it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to share this action hero story with you. Why? Because it's a story of not one, but two sisters from Compton, California. They always give it their best shot from the world of sports. Tennis champions many times over. None other than the Williams sisters. <laughs> now, before I roll the tape, let me share with you some basic facts about the sport of tennis before Venus and Serena Williams appeared on the scene. One, tennis is a game played primarily or actually exclusively played by wealthy white men and women. That changed with the Williams sisters. Two, the Williams sisters were powerhouses on the court. Their sticking serves 90 miles an hour and their potent ground strokes ushered in a new era of powerful women players and women of color. Three, their magic and miracle is they're sisters, best of friends, and best of competitors. Now, roll the tape! What do you want to be when you grow up? Tennis player. I would like to be a tennis player. Two black girls from Compton probably weren't supposed to ever play tennis, let alone be really good at it. It really surprised me when both of them are that good. Definitely going to be a really tough match for me. We make each other better, and we bring out the best when we play each other, and um, it's what we do, so I think we're used to it now. She's the toughest player I've ever played in my life, so, um, and the best person I know, so it's, it's, um, it's going against your best friend, and, and uh, at the same time going against the greatest competitor for me in women's tennis. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Australian Open 1998. We are excited today because the Williams sisters, Serena and Venus, are going to play each other for the title of Australian champion. The crowd is going wild with excitement. Look, over here, it is Richard and Orenstein Williams, the parents of Venus and Serena Williams. You don't know who to root for. Is it the oldest daughter, Venus, or their youngest daughter, Serena? Either way, they both win, they both lose. Two champions, one family. This is the making of Dynasty. Serena has entered the court. Venus has entered the court. The crowd is silent as Venus serves first. It is a strong serve to the far corner of the court. Serena returns with a strong hit to the far corner of the court. Look at them go. It is breathtaking to see the power and the jazz of the falling on the court. The score is 7 to 6, 6 to 1. The crowd is watching with bated breath. We are at the moment of truth. Which William will be victorious? Serena serves the ball. Venus lobs it back. Serena runs and does one of her famous hit splits as she returns the ball. The crowd is going wild! <laughs> Venus wins! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> wow! Venus and Serena, that was a match for the history books. How does it feel to win the championships over your sister? We push each other. 
be the best that we can be. I always want Serena to win because it's kind of strange. Because I'm the big sister, I take care of Serena. Well, for the younger sisters, we always look up to the big sisters because we always want to win. Because they are always older and ahead of us. And always do. Tennis is a game. Family is forever. Doubly determined, accomplished, that is you. Your confidence strengths are inspiring too. You make it look easy, but it really is not. Be prepared or prepared to fail on the spot. Soaring, soaring so, so high. Watch that ball fly through the sky. Your hitting that ball is straight and true. Your energy shines through. Thanks, Chris. What a story of power, determination, and love. Yoo-hoo! Del Mar for my shot. Is it time for my segment yet? Perfect timing, Del Mar. A woman's right to education is next. Excellent. But before I begin, please know that this story has some pretty upsetting parts to it. You see, our action Shira was only 15 years old when she was shot because she used her voice to defend the rights of girls to have an education. So she was literally shot, taking her shot. Yes. Roll tape! You named her after a girl who spoke out and was killed. It's almost as if you said she'll be different. You're right. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. Her story begins in the Swat Valley in Pakistan in 1997. Hello, I am Malala. I am an ordinary girl from the Swat Valley in Pakistan. I love my life there. My friends and I played by the river. I have two brothers who always annoyed me, and I was lucky to have a loving father, father and mother who supported my thirst for knowledge. You see, my father owned a schoolhouse for girls, so he might say I literally grew up in a schoolhouse. <laughs> then, in 2007, the Taliban came to the Swap Valley. Things changed in a big way. They banned girls from attending school. They banned dancing. They banned television. They killed anyone who did not agree. So, what did you do? Well, I needed to make a choice. I could be silent or I could stand up and speak. I chose to stand up and speak. I spoke out to the world about what was happening in my valley. That was a dangerous decision. What did your parents think of your decision? My parents supported my decision to speak out. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaking, but I, I gotta keep trying. Gotta keep my head up high. There's always gonna be another mountain. I'm always gonna wanna make it move. Always gonna be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose. And about how fast I get there. And about what's winning on the other side. The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes might knock me down. No, I'm not breaking, I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm gonna remember most, yeah. Just gotta keep going and I, I gotta be strong. Just keep pushing on. 
Cause, there's always gonna be another mountain. I'm always gonna wanna make it move. Always gonna be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose. And about how fast I get there. And about what's written on the other side. It's the My father only gave me the name Malale. He didn't make me Malale. I chose this life and now I must continue it. Malale Yousafzai won the Nobel Peace Prize. She was 17 years old, the youngest person to receive this award. This award is not just for me. It is for those forgotten children who want an education. It is for those frightened children who want peace. It is for those voiceless children who want change. There are two powers in the world. One is the sword and the other is the pen. There is a third power in the world that is stronger than both, that of women. The march for climate change is starting. Let's, let's, go. let's go. Where did they go? They want to be women who are heard, not just seen. Welcome back to My Shot. We sure have come a long way. We have a long way to go. Trixie Chi here covering the March for Climate Change, which was started by a new action chair on the scene, Greta Thunberg. At only 15, she's warning us all that if we don't take our shots to end climate change right now, there won't be any shots left to take. What can we do? Let's find out right now. We're going to have a talk with Greta Thunberg's most highly trusted assistant bunny, Hoppy, in our new segment, Ask Hoppy. Guess what? We're all in nature. Thanks, Hoppy. How do you feel about climate change? What's climate change? Humanity is now standing at a crossroads. We must now decide which path we want to take. A teenager from Sweden called the Voice of the Planet leads a global youth movement and has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Our house is falling apart. Our leaders need to start acting accordingly. Hi, Hoppy. How do you feel about global warming? I feel horrible about it. The world is getting hot, hot, hot. What can we do? Looks what hap look what's happening to all my friends. Hey! Yeah, I know. I never expected to be here. But fires are popping up everywhere. What can I do right now to stop the fires? Oh no! There's another one and it's heading my way. I'm gonna go. Bye. Help! Ah! Hello, Hoppy. As UK here reporting for the BBC World News. Hoppy, how do you feel about Greta Thunberg's actions on climate change? Best thing in the world! Her actions started with a solitary strike outside Sweden's parliament last year. And now, look at what her movement has become. Students and workers all around the world are flooding the streets, demanding action on climate change. 1.4 million kids across dozens of countries joined her in the streets. But it's looking like this will be the largest climate protest in our planet's history. Hoppy. Do you want to join Greta Thunberg's actions on climate change? Totally. I may be small, but I'm big enough to join her actions. Yeah! Thanks, Educate. And Courage here. I'm the youth reporter for My Shot, coming to you from the streets. This protest is literally hopping with young people. Let's see what they think. Please tell me about your signs. And not global warming, not now and not ever. Our lives and every life on the planet depend on stopping global warming now. It's time to act. Stop the global warming now. Thank you. Ah, here's another powerful sign. Please tell
our views about your sign? I drew this sign because the earth is saying, help me. I also made these flowers because they make me happy. If we don't stop climate change now, there won't be any flowers. I'm with Greta. Action now. Save the flowers and my happiness. Whoa, whoa, over there. I see some more interesting signs. Excuse me, hello. Will you please tell your viewers why you are protesting and what your sign says? I want everyone to stop putting trash in the ocean. Here is the ocean and here is all the trash. Save the fish and the water. Stop climate change. Act now. Save the world. My science is Libra, which is balance. The world is out of balance. The climate must get back in balance. Stop climate change. We must take our shots. Wow. Thank you, Encourage. Now to Greta Thunberg speak at the United Nations. Let's listen in. Our house is on fire. You have stolen my dreams. You have stolen my childhood with your empty words. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? How, How dare, dare you? you? Hello, my shop viewers and powers and... Patty D, here, taking over coverage for my shop. We are here to bring you the segment you've all been waiting for. Guess whose shoulders you're standing on now? We will read a famous quote from a woman who has taken a shot for all of us. Then we will ask an audience member for the answer. Who wants to take a shot at playing Who Shots Are You Standing On Now? Pick me, pick me, pick me. I want to take my shot. Thank you for your enthusiasm. What's your name? Audrey. Where are you from? Wisconsin. Okay, are you ready to play? Yes. Our first question involves a woman who dedicated her life to equality under the law for every citizen. One of her famous quotes is, when asked, where will there be enough women on the Supreme Court? She replied, when there are nine. Um, uh, Notorious RBG, um, just Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That is correct. <laughs> Who will be our next audience member to take a shot? Yes, Em. Let's welcome Olivia here, all the way from San Francisco. Hi, Mom. Patty D, is it already time for this week's suffragette pyramid? That's right, Em. And our category is women who run for political office. This is our first question. Who was the first African-American woman to run for president of the United States? One of her famous quotes is, they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Shirley Chisholm, 1972. Oh! Oh! Excellent. Now, Shirley Chisholm is the base of this week's pyramid. Who will be next to stand on Shirley Chisholm's shoulders? Her famous quote is, Vice Presidents are not cute. Cheerleading for our own 1984. Oh! That is right. Geraldine Ferraro is the first woman nominated by a major political party to run for Vice President of the United States. This question is for either audience member. Moving up the political ladder, who is the first woman to be nominated by a major political party to run for President of the United States? One of her famous quotes is, we weren't able to shatter the highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, but it's got 18 million cracks in it and the light is shining through like never before. Got this, I got this. Hillary Rodham Clinton, 2016 presidential election. Yay! Okay, so we have Hillary Rodham Clinton standing on Geraldine Ferraro's shoulders and Geraldine Ferraro is standing on Shirley Chisholm's shoulders. Who will be next to stand on the shoulders of Hillary Rodham Clinton? Are you ready? Yes! She is the first woman, first black woman, and first woman of Indian heritage to win the office of Vice President of the United States. Her famous quote is, While I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourself 
in a way that others may not see you simply because they've never seen it before. And we will applaud you every step of the way. Kamala Harris. That is the correct answer. I got it, I got it, I got it, yeah. And Vice President Kamala Harris is in the house. Thanks, my shot for all the women who have worked to secure and protect the right to vote for over a century. I reflect on their struggle, their determination, and the strength of their vision to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And I stand on their shoulders. We must remember to protect what we have won. And above all, we must continue to finish the fight. It was we the people. Not we the white male citizens. Nor yet. We the male citizens. But we the whole people. We the whole people. We the whole people who formed this union. And we formed it. Not to get the blessings of liberty. But to secure them. And not to the half of ourselves. And the half of our posterity. But to the whole people. Women as well as men. The principle of self-government could not be violated with impunity. The individual's right to it is sacred. Regardless of class, caste, race, color, sex, or any other accident or incident of birth. What we ask is that we shall cease to imagine that women are outside the law. And coming to the knowledge that, that disenfranchisement means the same degradation. To your daughters, ask to your son. It is on this line that we propose to fight. Our battle. Fight our battle. Our battle. For the ballot. All peaceable. But nevertheless persistently. Through to complete triumph. For all United States citizens. To be recognized as equal. Before the law. In the late 1800s, this was Susan B. Anthony's message to America. What's yours? I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, you all here for my sisters. I'm not a mister. I might get some blisters, but I'm no change resistance. Serena and Venus Williams hit the ball. They played so well, and now they're the greatest of all. There's no problem that they got a lot of brains and a lot of college. With every tennis ball, they serve knowledge. She chose to be a model instead of tighter than it seemed. Trying to reach her education goals and dreams. Only 15 when they tried to stop me, but I got back on my feet. I did not skip a beat. Gratitude for climate protest grew and grew. To help the world so it's better for me and you. Her plan is to fan and spark into a flame to protect the air she refuses to travel by plane. S-U-F-F-R-A-G-E-T-T-E-S meant to be women that vote independently. Men keep stopping us endlessly. Essentially, we are the suffragettes. The police came around and they did arrest, but they couldn't shut down our protest. Our revolution put equality to the test. Vote now, she says in parentheses. Don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. We will lay down our lives if it sets us free. Eventually, we'll see our ascendancy. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Can you all hear me from my sisters? I'm not a mister, I might get some blisters, but I'm no change of sister. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, I'm changing my country. I'm young, sparky, and hungry. I'm not throwing away my shot. Rise up when you're looking for that ease. You rise up. Tell your brother that he's gonna rise up. Tell your sister that she's gonna rise up. One of these, one of these gonna rise up. Tell the Taliban to see he's gonna rise up. Global warming to your knees gonna rise up. We all need equality gonna rise up, rise up. And I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, I'm changing my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not throwing away my shot. We're gonna rise up. Time to take a shot. We're gonna rise up. Time to take a shot. We're gonna rise up. Rise up. Take a shot. Rise up. Rise up. Take a shot. And I am not throwing away my. I'm not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, you all here for my sisters. I'm not a mister. I might get some blisters, but I'm no change resistance. Serena and Venus.
Williams hits the ball. They play so well, now they're the greatest of all. There's no problem that they got a lot of brains and a lot of polish. With every tennis ball, they serve knowledge. She chose to be my mom and said it's harder than it seems. Trying to reach her education goals and dreams. Only 15 when they tried to stop me, but I got back on my feet. I did not skip a beat. Gratitude for climate protest grew and grew to help the world, so it's better for me and you. Her plan is to fan and spark into a flame to protect the air. She refuses to travel by plane. S-U-F-F-R-A-G-E-T-T-E-S meant to be. Women that vote independently. Men keep stopping us endlessly. Essentially, we are the suffragettes. The police came around and they did arrest, but they couldn't shut down our protest. Our revolution put equality to the test. Vote now, she says in parentheses. Don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. We will lay down our lives if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see our ascendancy. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Can you all hear me from my sisters? I'm not a mister, I'm a I get some blisters, but I'm no change of sister. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, I'm changing my country. I'm young, sparky, and hungry. I'm not throwing away my shot. Rise up when you're looking that easy. You rise up. Tell your brother that he's gonna rise up. Tell your sister that she's gonna rise up. One of these, one of these gonna rise up. Tell the Taliban to see he's gonna rise up. Global warming to your knees gonna rise up. We all need equality gonna rise up. Rise up. And I am not throwing away my, not throwing away my shot.